Good morning, San Diego, even though it feels like Seattle outside. Uh, so back in Barcelona, I talked about the need for networking to evolve for a cloud-native world. Today, I'm going to talk about how that evolution is critical and it's already happening by looking at a real-world use case. But before I do that, I have a question for the audience. Are you a real programmer? Now, before you raise your hand, let me point out that the comic strip that you see behind me is a mashup of two comic strips from XKCD and one from user-friendly. And in that, you see a programmer sitting at their desk, and a person approaches them and says, Nano? Real programmers use Emacs. And this begins a parade of people who say, no, real programmers use Vim or Cat or Ed. But the clincher is when somebody walks up to them and says, you guys are all wimps. Real programmers use magnets to edit the inodes directly on disk. <laughs> that is one viewpoint. Another viewpoint, it comes from Leslie Lamport, who got his Turing Award in the field of distributed computing. So he knows a thing or two about distributed computing. And he says, coding should be the easiest part of programming. And if you're having trouble coding, you're doing something wrong. Now, what does this have to do with networking? For one, networks are a key component of any distributed system. So let's take a look at the real world scenario and see how networks are programmed today in a cloud native environment. In this picture up here, we have a use case where there are four databases, three running on public clouds, one on-prem, and they simply want to communicate with each other securely to be able to either shard and or repl replicate. How would you solve this today in a cloud-native world? By the way, congratulations to Vitesse on graduating and becoming a graduated project. So one way to program that network is to use magnets. So you start with the technical complexity of dealing with ever-changing pod IPs, of dealing with different routes or different clouds, firewall VPN complexity, different configs and compliance needs for the different cloud vendors, and that's just technical complexity. Then you run into organizational complexity, where you have devs and DevOps and NetOps and SecOps and Colo providers and cloud providers, and you need to talk to all of them. And each one of those labels is not a single person, it's a team. So meetings and tickets and meetings and tickets, magnets. Finally, there's process complexity. Is there a process? Is it stable? Who is accountable? More meetings, more tickets. A developer's best friend, not. And all of this is happening because the application architecture is changing in a cloud-native environment and therefore the organizational architecture and the operational architectures are changing. And so you cannot use the concepts for physical and virtual networking, which were aggregate statistical networking concepts, like switches, routers, vSwitches, vRouters, BGP, to solve application-level problems. We need to simplify connectivity paradigms for application development. And this is where enter network service mesh. So we are a sandbox project in CNCF. We got our sandbox status back in April, uh, around the time of KubeCon Barcelona. Roughly 40 uh, contributors and counting, and extreme interest from financials, enterprises, and SPs. As you can imagine, nobody wants to deal with magnets. And we had our first ever day zero event, and it was 180% over capacity. So as a community, we are extremely excited about that. So how do you solve that problem that I just described using NSM? Very simply, all you do is extend your CRD with a line that says, I want to belong to the DB replication NSM domain. And then NSM magically takes care of securely connecting all of those database pods and ensuring that only those database pods talk to each other. Now behind the covers, things are a little bit more complicated, but still pretty simple, where you have a network service endpoint running in every cluster that takes care of the data plane between these database pods, wherever they happen to be. And then there is an NSM registry that figures out 
the discovery process of the remote endpoint, again, wherever they happen to be. And all of this is done for the developer without them knowing anything about IPs, routes, subnets, or any special CNI. Now, if you want to look at a demo of this, this exact same demo is running at the Cisco booth, so please come by, take a look. There are demos on application security and observability. You can talk to the NSM community. Uh, reach out to us, please. And then if you visit our booth, you will get stickers with, say, magnets or NSM. Take your pick. Thank you.